and the new what's going on all man thanks for tuning in Trey's channel go grab a drink man grab a coffee or a refresher i'm going to be talking for a while um history is made you know history is made charlo has done it you know jamal jamal charlo now there's two Charlo brothers, there's Jamal and Jamal, right? So Jamal is the one in junior middleweight, Jamal's the one in middleweight. And Jamal's the one that done it, okay? Both twin brothers, if you're not familiar with the Charlos, um, he's made history, you know? He's made history without a doubt, you know? He's done what he needed to do. Um, and big props to him. There was also another fight. Um, Innes against Clayton, okay, now Innes is a guy that a lot of people are really um, talking about, you know, talking about up and coming champion and things like that, you know, saying that Boots Innes is the guy that's going to um, dominate the waterweight division, you know, a lot of people are saying that, but the thing is, is that the division is already almost, you know, at its peak, we got one major fight between Crawford and Spence, you know. And um, will Innes be able to fight the winner, the winner of them? You know, I mean, he is mandatory, but what's going to happen after that? You know, they might move up and wait. Who knows what, what's, what the future holds for Innes, you know. So Innes is mandatory now, and I believe he should stay busy and have another fight. Even though he's mandatory, I think it's going to be a long wait for him. He should just stay active and possibly fight someone that's more known, you know. Um, back to Charlo. Charlo, what a great fight that was, you know. He's made history, as I said. And straight after the fight, he says that he wants to go up to 160. I believe his brother Jamal wants to go to 168. So the route that they took that they're taking is that Jamal wants to fight Canelo and I think Charlo wants to become undisputed in two classes, two weight classes, you know. Um at the moment Jamal isn't undisputed, but he wants to move up in weight and he wants to um fight Canelo. It's very similar to the Klitschko brothers, you know. The Klitschko brothers, um, not not the moving and weight part, but the fact that they didn't fight each other, you know. I believe it's the same sort of respect that they won't fight each other. Um, but I'm glad that they're in different weight classes because the Klitschko brothers held up the heavyweight division for a long time, you know, for undisputed. We still haven't seen an undisputed champion for the last 20 years. You know, so I mean, Jamal... Jam Jam wants to go up to 168 and Jamal wants to go up to 160 um, so I mean at 160 I think Jamal should fight Triple G um, Golovkin you know he holds majority of the belts and you know he's a legend in the sport a lot of people have has avoided Golovkin and I believe he should go for him if Golovkin doesn't want to fight him then next to none should be Jaime Mangia you know um, undefeated fighter um, but those are the two options for Jamal for Jamal he's going to have to wait for the Canelo bubble rematch you know so I mean I don't know what Jamal is going to do at 168 I'm not sure if you'll fight maybe um, Caleb Plant or I'm not sure what the case will be with him regardless if Canelo is fighting they both need to stay busy Okay, now, Jamal, let's talk about that fight, okay? Jamal came in there, focused, you know, it was a rematch. The first fight, I believe, Castanio won, you know, in my opinion, even though Jamal came back strong in the end of the fight. Um, I think Castanio won the first fight. You know, it was a draw. I wasn't, you know, too phased about that. I understand how it works, you know, sometimes you don't get it right, um, and sometimes it depends where you're fighting as well, so I mean, Castanio came in with the same game plan as the first fight, um, where 
Charlo changed it up a bit, you know. He um, used that left hook, you know, that that um, powerful left hook that he has, and he kept landing it. And even though he was on the back foot, you know, he was exchanging on the inside, you know, um, getting close to Castanio, but at the same time on the back foot, ready to move back and to circle out of the corner with the left hook, you know, which kept landing. By doing this, um, Castanio was unable to find his long range, you know, because Charlo's exchanging at mid-range, you know, he's, he's going inside the pocket and they're exchanging and then he's moving back and, you know, he's using the jab now and then and then he's using the left hook to get out of danger, you could say, you know, to get away from the ropes and it was effective, you know, the left hook kept landing over and over and over again. And the thing is, is that the left hook is the money shot for Charlo. You know, understand that. That last time he lost, he came back and he won with the knockout, with the left, left hook. You know, the referee had to stop the fight. So, I mean, he knew that he had the power in the left hook. That's his money shot. And he kept landing it over and over and over to the point where Castanio started to fade out at the at the back end of the fight. You know, you could see it. The first three rounds, Charlo won. The, the, the next three rounds, Castanio won, you could say. You know, there was a few close rounds in that in those three rounds. But around round seven, eight, nine, that was all Charlo. You know, that was all Charlo. Um, although Castanio did, um, you know, put up a good round before he got put down, he was... Um, also hurt, you know, he was also getting hurt from that left hook, the left hook didn't stop landing, and that is what you call getting broken down, you know you see Canelo doing that a lot of times he's landing that same shot over and over and over again to the point where they get broken down, and that's what happened here, the body shots and the hook to the chin to the temple, you could say um, was landing flush throughout the whole fight and it was only a matter of time before Charlo finished the fight. Now the thing with Charlo is that he's learning that he needs to take risks in these fight. You know, you can't just be on the back foot and run away to the end of the fight. You know, that's how you get caught up and possibly get caught. Now I believe Castanio's um, punches wasn't really hurting Charlo because Charlo's got an iron chin. You know. Charlo was the sort of dude that can take heavy punches, you know. Castanio showed that he can't, you know, showed that he can't. And that's what happened here tonight, or you could say in the fight. Um, this is something that a lot of the tour fighters need to learn, you know, especially, I believe, Tyson Fury needs to learn the style. You know, being on the back foot but fighting on the inside because I believe that he's quite vulnerable moving forward. You know, I believe he's easier to get caught. Now, obviously, he put on a masterclass against um, Dillian White. and um, But I'm just saying, you know, this is the sort of style that you want to use when you're trying to take away a guy's range, you know. Although Castanio is a short-range fighter, Charlo was still able to dominate him. You see, he was able to dominate the guy that's um, used to that, you know. He was able to use the right style to beat Castanio by fighting his fight, but also fighting Charlo's fight, you know. So he was fighting a bit of both fights, being very smart, very, very selective, and he was able to um, control the distance smartly, you know, by moving back. Never getting caught, really. You know, he was, wasn't was really getting cut off the ropes. And he took a lot of risks, you know. And that's what you need to do in these undisputed fights. You know, you got to take risks. Um, now, what does this mean for pound for pound wines? I believe that um, there's a lot of um, undisputed champions. Like, you know, that's been undisputed before you got 
Crawford that's been undisputed. You've got, you know, Canelo, um, Usyk, you know. Those are the names that that are on their way, um, you know, to be the greatest that they can be. You know, you've got Crawford that's one fight away from being the man, you know. I mean, if Crawford beats Spence, in my opinion, he is number one, pound for pound, you know. And with Canelo, he's got to fight Bovel, you know. I mean, if even if Jamal Charlo, you know, manages to fight Canelo at 168 for Undisputed, it might, it might be a bit of a wait, you know. Who knows if Canelo's going to fight Bovel at 168 or 175, you know. That's a big question. And I believe if he does fight him at 175, which I think that he should, then at least Charlo can have a go for the undisputed, you know, this is what it's all about now, guys, it's all about who has the the best wins, um, and, you know, who's the pound for pound king, at the moment, Usyk is also in the, in the mix, you know, Usyk is fighting AJ, then he's got to fight, he has to fight Fury next, you know, Fury needs to just snap out of this retirement talk and fight the winner of AJ versus Usyk, you know, um, but, like I said, pound for pound wines, Crawford, if he beats um, Spence, then he will be number one. And then keep in mind, he could also fight Josh Taylor. You know, Josh Taylor is also an undisputed champion. And he could win that too, you know. So this is all a competition to see who was the best at, in boxing, you know. This is what it's all about here. The Charlos are looking to take over, but you still got Crawford there. You still got Usyk there. And obviously... You got the big money man, the 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 um, you know, the man, the face of boxing. They call him Canelo, um, which everybody wants to fight. Everybody wants to fight Canelo. Um, but keep in mind, you know, Usyk's fighting Joshua. He's also the cash cow. You know, so I mean, there's Canelo and Joshua, right? Although Canelo does earn more, Joshua is still a very big name, you know, you'll get a lot of money fighting him, so I mean, um, obviously the Charlo brothers won't, won't make it to heavyweight, you know, I doubt that they will, they're in the 32 now, I believe, 31, 32, but um, there is potential for Canelo versus Usyk, and there is potential for a Crawford versus Charlo at junior money weight, you know, I believe that Crawford could possibly move up. He could fight Josh Taylor if he beats Spence, then he could fight Charlo. Who knows, you know, so I mean, at the end of the day, you know, great job for um, to Charlo for winning. You know, he's made history. He is on the pound for pound list. He put up a great fight. He took a lot of risks. And, you know, he was dominant and very disciplined. I'm on my last sip. Boxing is definitely back. You know, boxing is definitely back, man. Canelo, at the moment, is in the top 10 for highest paid athletes in the world. Um, and we're possibly going to see the biggest fight in boxing, which is Crawford versus Spence, regardless of the money. That's the biggest fight in boxing, okay? Crawford wins. He's number one pound for pound. And... That's all I've got to say, man. Congratulations to Charlo. It was a heck of a fight. Thanks for tuning in. Leave, me, leave your take. And um, like I said, you know, Charlo stepped up and done the business, you know. Took the risks. Landed that great left hook, man, throughout the whole fight. And his punch selection was great. You know, he was going to the body to slow down Castaño as well. And he managed to break him down with that left hook, you know, and finish him off in the 10th round. And that's all I need to say, man. It is the aftermath. Thanks for tuning in once again. Leave your take. And um, I look forward to hearing back from you, man. Peace. God bless. Have a good one.